steps in your word, dear Lord. Hallelujah. All the next steps in your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings and welcome everyone to a teleconference another time we are here to give thanks to god to give glory to god for what he has done the lord has done great things for us we are off we are glad so we are here today to give him thanks and to give him praise and to remember all that he has done he he has taken us from a mighty long way he has kept us through his grace and through his mercy so many has passed on. I mean, even if we look at our life and look, look at people who we have met in, in the past, and many of them are no longer here. They are gone. Praise the name of Jesus. But we are still here. So we give God thanks that he has spared us. It's wonderful to know God. It's wonderful to know the Lord. It's wonderful to give him praise and to give him glory. It's wonderful to understand what he has done and know what he has done for us and that great sacrifice that he did to set us free from the chains and the shackles of sin. So we give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ and thank God for everyone who's joined us. We're going to go into the Word of God today and um, our topic today will be faith and favor with God faith and favor with God praise the Lord so before we're going to look into the book of Genesis we're going to start the Genesis chapter 12 and we're going to read a few verse and also Genesis chapter 15 and Genesis chapter 22 so mainly we'll be dealing with the book of Genesis praise God thank you Jesus so I'm going to have a short prayer as normal and to invite God to take charge of his word. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for all that you have done. We praise and glorify you because you are God all by yourself. Hallelujah. You create heaven and you create earth. You create everything that we see. Oh God, because of your one, your power and your grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything, for life, for strength, for grace and mercy. Bless us and lead us as we pray and we look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to look at faith and favor with God. You know, the Bible says faith is an essential part of serving God. The Bible tells us that without faith, we cannot please God. So everyone that come to God, everyone that come to the Lord, must believe that He is. And not only that He is, but that He is a rewarder to them that diligently seek Him. So that's what the Bible tells us, and that's what we believe, and that's what we experience. Experience tells us all. Experience gives us wisdom. And so we know that once we believe God and we trust in Him and we call upon Him, He will accomplish whatever we ask Him, when we ask Him in truth, in faith and in truth. So we're going to look at the patriot Abraham, the man of God who loved God, man of God who seek God, a man of God who has his mind upon God and wanted to walk in the ways of God, wanted to please God. And I think we all should want to have a desire to please God. So we're going to look at Abraham and the story of Abraham. And it starts from verse 12 of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Start from verse 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 down to verse 10. And this is a time when God called Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 reads, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and thy, make thy name great, 
and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son and all the substance that they had gathered and the soul that, that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plains of Moab. And the Canaanites was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there built he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared before him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain on the east of Beth Bethel, and pitched his tent. Having Bethel on the west, and Heal, Heai, on the east, and there he built an altar altar unto the Lord and called the name of the Lord. Abraham sojourned, going on still towards the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt and to sojourn there, for the famine was very, was grievous. The famine was grievous. So, we look at the way that God called Abraham. Abraham was in, with his own kindred and um, God saw something in him. Whenever God called us, God always sees something in us. There was something in Abraham that God saw. He was a man of faith, a man of love, a genuine man. And God could see inside Abraham's heart. And God knew that he could use him. So it says, God said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show thee. Now Abraham knew the voice of God. And because he knew the voice of God, he wanted to please God, so he obeyed God. It's important that we know the voice of God. One songwriter says, sweeter than all. His voice is sweeter than all. So Abraham obeyed God and went down where God showed him. Left his father's house, left his family, left his kindred. And he said it took with him. Sarah, God said to Abraham, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and will make thee great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Isn't it wonderful when we think about it, when God has picked us out from many. God has put his hand upon us. But God has put his mark upon us. And in due course of time, God called us when he's ready to use us, he called us, he called Abraham. He said, I will make you a great nation. That's a promise that God made to a mere man. I will make you a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. I will and thou shalt be a blessing. Isn't it wonderful that we can imagine how Abraham must have felt when he knew and he knew the voice of God tell him get out 
from your own people, from your father's house. It's not easy to leave everything that you are so accustomed to. And remember the Bible says he was 75 years of age. He was 75 when God called him. So he has spent 75 years among his own kindred, among his father's house. And God says, come out, get out. Get out. There is a, I want to make you a great nation. I want to separate you from your father's house. I form your kindred. I want to separate you. And he heard the voice of God and obeyed the voice of God. So it, it says, Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him and took with him Sarah and his brother's son Lot and the greats and their substance that they had gathered and the soul which they had gotten in Haran, and went forth into the land of Canaan, into the land, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abraham passed the land to Shechem, unto the, Moab, unto the plains of Moab, and the Canaanites was then in the land. So God promised Abraham the land. God promised him to make him a great nation. And you know what? Abraham believed God. He trusted the Lord that the Lord will fulfill his promise. And now, even now in these days, we can talk about Abraham. Because Abraham was justified because of his faith. Because he believed God. He knew that God is a God of his word. He knew that God would stand by his promise. He knew that God was going to make him a great nation. He knew that God was going to make him a blessing. God said he will multiply him and make his seed as the stars in the sky. Imagine that. And God said he would make his seed as the sand on the seashore. How great, what a promise. And we know that God has kept his promise to Abraham because even today we can say we are the children of Abraham by faith. Faith justified Abraham because he heard the voice of God and he believed and he followed the voice of God. In verse 7 it says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And he, there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. In those days God appeared unto the patriots and prophet as a man. Many times that God appeared unto the prophets and the patriots. He appeared as a man because God is a man. And that's why we man are made in his image. And he will move from thence, verse 8, it says, He will move from thence unto a mountain, unto the east of Baal, and pitch a tent there, having Baal on the, Bethel on the east, and Hare on the east, and Bethel on the west. And there he built an altar, an altar unto the Lord and called the name of the Lord and he sojourned Abraham sojourned he journeyed going on towards the south and there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt and sojourned there and the famine was grievous in the land it shows that sometimes, even when God calls us, we will encounter obstacles on the way, on the journey. We will incur obstacles and challenges and temptation and various things will come on the way. It doesn't mean that God did not call us. It did not mean that God did not point us where to go. It does not mean that God is not with us. 
But on this journey to Canaan, he encountered famine. And the Bible says he, Abraham went down to Egypt for the famine was grievous in the land. God, God did not promise us a life of roses only. There always has to be challenges. But we have to be steadfast. We have to stand on the word of God. But we have to stand on the promises of God. So we see in this section where God called Abraham out of his house. 75 years old. Go out to a land that I will show you. You may say, why did not God call him at an earlier age? But God knew the time was the appointed time, the time when he was to call him, when he was mature enough to obey the word of God. God has a time, God has a set timetable. And God called him, he obeyed, and he went out into the land, leaving his own kindred and leaving his father's house. He went out on the promises of God. Some writer says, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. When God call us and say, go out, we must obey the word of God. Because God's promises is sure. And God called each and every one of us in the same manner. He said, come out from among them. Come out from, if, you're, if your kindreds are not serving God, come out from them. If, they're not, if they don't love God, come out from them. Be separate. God wants a separate people who loves him and who serve him, who obey him. And Abraham was that man. And moving on, in Genesis chapter 15, I read a few verses in Genesis chapter 15 when God... Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding, exceedingly great reward. What a thing that God would say to a man, Abraham, I am thy shield. I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. I am thy shield. He loved Abraham. And Abraham loved God. Love with reciprocate love. And God knew that the love he had for Abraham was reflected in, a, in him, in Abraham, through his obedience. Obedience was the key. Faith and obedience. He says, I am thy shield and I am thy exceedingly great reward. And Abraham said, Lord, what wilt thou give me, seeing that I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eliza of the masters. So Sarah, Abraham's wife, was barren. She was not bearing any fruit. She was not bearing any child. And God, and, and God promised Abraham that he would multiply him. And he's saying to God, God is saying, I am your shield, I am your exceedingly great reward. Abraham reasoned with God. You know, sometimes we can reason with the Lord. We can reason with God. Isn't that wonderful? Abraham said to the Lord, what will thou give me? Seeing that I'm childless, I have be, you know, and the steward of my house is Eliza of Damascus, the servant. Because Sarah was barren, she could not bear a child. But God promised, God promised, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. At the age of 75, and Abraham said, Behold, to me, Thou hast given no seed, and lo, one that is born in my house, in my hair. So Abraham had a child with a bond woman, the maid. Because Sarah said to, uh, to Abraham, Since I bear not no child, go unto the maid, and 
she be a child of her. So Abraham hearkened unto Sarah his wife and went on to the maid, and the maid be a child. And he said, This is my hair. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This is not thine hair, but he that come forth out of thine own bowels is thine heir. So even though Abraham had a son with the bondwoman, that was not Abraham's seed that God promised. The seed that Abraham, the seed of Abraham would come from Sarah, his wife. You see how God is a God of order? You see how God loved order? He did not, even though Abraham had a son, but that was not his hair. His hair had to come from his wife, Sarah. And he brought forth him abroad. So this is God. God brought Abraham outside, abroad, and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars. Hallelujah. If thou art able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy steed be. God take Abraham outside and said, look up, look towards the heaven, look up and the numerable numbers of stars, tell the stars, count them, if thou are able to number them, and he said, Unto him, so shall thy seed be. What a promise. What a great promise. But Abraham believed, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In verse 6, he says, And he believed the Lord. Isn't it wonderful when we believe God? Isn't it wonderful when we trust the word of God? Even now, if we stand on the promises of God, God said, I am with thee. God said to us, I am with thee and I will be with you even to the ends of the earth. And with that assurance, we can be assured that God will not leave us nor forsake us. Abraham was assured that God meant what he said, that he will be his shield and his exceedingly great reward. Abraham believed that God was going to multiply his seed as the stars in the sky. He, he believed God because God never lie. God always stands by his word and his word is sure. So we think about Abraham, what God promised him, and how he believed God. And in the due course of time, we can see that the angel appeared unto Sarah and told her that she would be with child. When Sarah got the news from the angel, she did not believe. She said, I'm past age. Whenever we give up, we cannot give up. Because there's no give up in God. Because there's no defeat in God. God cannot defeat, be defeated. His word has to accomplish. Whatever God said in his word, it has to be accomplished. Bless you. Whatever God said in his word, it has to be accomplished. His word, he said, I send forth my word and it will not return unto me void. When God sent his word out, it will not return. It will accomplish. It will accomplish whatever God sent his word to do. So when God says something to us, just believe. When God says something to us, just stand up on his word. 
His word is solid. His word cannot be altered. His word is true. So God made that promise to Abraham and Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Anything that God said to us, brethren, let us not doubt him. Because faith, faith is faith. When we have faith in God, we never ever doubt. We cannot doubt if we have faith in God. So let us be as Abraham, who believed God. And because he believed God, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Because he believed God, God said, I am thy exceeding great reward. And going on, we see how God appeared unto Abraham again. A third time now. In Genesis 22, God appeared unto Abraham. God and Abraham began, built an, a relationship. God and Abraham, they built an relationship. They became, he was like a friend of God. Because he was believed in the word of God. He believed and obeyed the word of God. He became a friend of God. And in verse chapter 22, God tested Abraham in a very powerful way. In chapter 22 of Genesis, God, you know, sometimes we, we have to go through these tests and God wants to prove us. The Bible says, as, as gold is tried in the fire, you know when the gold comes out of the earth, it has to go through fire to be purified. And when it goes through the fire and the furnace, it separates the gold from the gross, from the dirt or whatever it is that cling to it. It separated it. We, God, want to separate us completely unto him. And sometimes we go through the test. So this time, God put Abraham to the test. In chapter 22 of Genesis, it says that it came to pass that after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, which thou lovest, lovest, and get thee upon Mount Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt sacrifice, as, as a burnt offering unto, un, upon the mountain which I shall tell thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and sat his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here. Abide ye here with the asses. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon this upon Isaac his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. 
And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said unto him, said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And so, and they went both them together. And it came to pass in the place, to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld, withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. How wonderful! What a wonderful thing it is that after waiting all these years and God gave Abraham a son. God gave him a son. God appeared unto him and said, said unto him, the one son, take thy son, take thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. Take thy son, thy only son that thou lovest, Isaac, and get thee upon Mount Morab, Moriah. Offer him there a burnt sacrifice, burnt offering upon the mountain which I shall tell thee. What a test! And sometimes God tests us in various ways. But you know, God knows what is in us. And God knows our level of obedience. He knew Abraham has a great level of obedience. Abraham knew the voice of God. And Abraham's faith was so great in God that he went according to the word of God, he rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, took with him two men, his son Isaac, and he took the wood for the burnt offering, rose up and went to the place where God had told him. What is, what, how great is that faith? How great is that faith? Your one and only son. Take him up on the mount, Mount Moriah. Take him up there and offer him unto a burnt offering. Offer him. Slew him, basically. And Abraham goes. You know, when we hear the voice of God, we, 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 if we follow the voice of God, we can go through the storm. If we follow the voice of God, we can go through the fire. If we follow the voice of God, we can go through the water. We can go through anything. David said, through thee I can jump over. I can go over hills and valleys. He said, I could leap over hoops. David knew God. Knew God could take him through anything, any circumstances. And so Abraham knew the voice of God and obeyed the Lord. The third day, he lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. So it, we can imagine it was quite a journey, but his mind was made up to follow the word of God. That's what God wants us to do. Follow him, follow his word, trust in his word, obey his word. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide here. Some places we go, we can't take everyone with us. 
Some place we go, we have to ask people to stay, wait there. Let me go forward. Let me go into the place where I can meet with Jesus and talk with Jesus. And Jesus can talk with me. We can have a close communion. Abraham told the men to abide here and I will go up yonder to worship and come again unto you. So Abraham took the burnt offering, took the wood, took Isaac his son, and the fire in his hand, and the knife, and they went up together. Abraham was determined to please God. He was determined to serve God. He was determined to obey God. And though, so he was, a, he was prepared to slew his only son. He was prepared. And you may say, why? Why? Because the example of Abraham sacrifices his son is an example of God sacrificing Jesus. God gave his only begotten son that we may have life and that we may have salvation. Abraham was a sample of God. He was prepared to offer his only son as a burnt offering because God said so. God offered his only son Jesus as a sacrifice unto us to redeem us and to save us. Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering laid it upon his son Isaac. He took the fire, he took the knife took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went up together. Isaac spake unto Abraham his father said Father my father and he said here I am my son. He said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said on said my son God will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went up together. Abraham said God will provide a lamb. Isaac said where is the lamb? We are going to make a sacrifice. We have the wood, we have the knife, we have the fire, we have everything. Where is the lamb? God will provide. God is a great provider. Brethren, whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, remember, God will provide. He is a provider. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering, Abraham told Isaac. And so they went on together. And they came to the place which God had told, of him, told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bond, bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Faith without works. Abraham believed God. It was accounted unto him for righteousness. He knew the voice of God. And he knew whatever God tell him to do, it will be all right. Do it. It will be all right. Whatever the Lord says, it will be all right. If you know the voice of the Lord and the voice of the Lord say, go, sir, go. If the Lord says climb, climb. If the Lord says jump, jump. Because it's going to be all right. I remember the time when at the marriage of Canaan when they ran out of wine and there was no wine and the good man looked and um, said, alas, the wine is finished. And Mary said to Jesus, the wine is finished. A woman because Jesus had the power. 
he had the wish. Mary said to the man, whatever he said, whatever Jesus says, do it. Do it. Whatever God said, do it. And Jesus says, go and fill those vessels with water and bring forth. Whatever God says, let's do it. Wherever God say go, let's go. Wherever God said turn, let's turn. Because God is always right. God cannot be wrong. And Abraham knew it. It's only when we know that God is always right, we can follow him. It's only when we know that God don't make mistakes, we can serve him. It's only when we realize true faith that God cannot err, that is perfect. That everything that God says must accomplish. When we know that, it doesn't matter what he says to us, we obey. If God said go through the fire, let's go. Let's go through the fire. Because he'll take us through. At the moment when, when they came out of Egypt, God said stretch forth. Moses, stretch forth your hand. And go across the on dry land. Go across the sea. Hallelujah. Our God is a great God. When we believe the word of God and we stand on the word of God, we cannot fail. Because God never fail. So, came to the place where Abraham got to the place. They came to the place where God showed, told him off. And he built an altar. And he set the wooden order. So important. He didn't just throw the wood them. He set them in order. Packed them neatly. Hallelujah. Abraham laid the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son. He bound, he tied Isaac to the wood and laid him on the altar upon the wood. He did what God told him to do. Everything that God told him to do, he did. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. That's faith. Brethren, that is faith. Abraham stretched forth his hand, took up the knife to slay his son. And the angel, God is on time. He's an on time God. He's a God who's never late. No matter how it seems, he's never late. Picked up his knife. Abraham picked up the knife to lay his son. And the angel called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. Hallelujah. Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou any harm. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that awesome? That as he was about to slay his son, the angel called Abraham out of heaven and said, Abraham, lay not thy hand upon the lad, for now I know that thou fearest God. God knew Abraham before, even before he was conceived in the womb. God knew the person Abraham was. But God 
wanted to approve him and even to let him see what he has done, how he trusted in the Lord and he was prepared to do the ultimate sacrifice. God himself did the ultimate sacrifice for us when he sent his son to be slain on the cross, to be nailed on the cross. God gave his only begotten son. In fact, if we look back in time, in the history, in the patriots and the prophets, they were servants of God. God never called them son. Only when Jesus, the birth of Jesus, was the only begotten son of the living God. And God sacrificed his son on the altar to save us. And that was what Abraham was prepared to do, sacrifice his only son to obey the voice of God. And Abraham lift up his eyes and behold, behold, he beheld behind him a ram caught in the ticket by his horn. And Abraham took the ram and offer him up a burnt offering instead of his son. So it all worked out well because God had had a lamb there, a ram. God had a ram there for the sacrifice. Abraham said God will provide himself a lamb. And as he released his son Isaac from the birth, from the altar from the altar. There was the ram caught in the ticket. He got hold of the ram and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said unto this day, the mount in the mount of the Lord it was it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provide. The Lord provide a lamb for the sacrifice. God will provide a lamb. He did provide a lamb. But faith put us in favor with God. And that is our topic and theme for today is that we must believe in the word of God. We must be justified by trusting in the living God, knowing that God is real. And His Word, we can stand on His Word. We can trust in His Word. Oh, so sweet. The songwriter says, Oh, sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to depend upon His Word. Just to stand upon His promise. Just to know, thus said the Lord. Abraham was accounted, his faith that he had in God is accounted unto him for righteousness. And as long as this world remain, we will not forget what Abraham has done in trusting and believing and standing on the word of God. They are sure if we only believe, if we only trust in his word, we will not, he will not fail. If we only lean on his promise, he will not let us down. Faith, the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. By faith, Many of the elders, the elder patriots and prophets were justified. And I, you cannot stop to talk about how many people were justified, how many of God's people were justified because they believed God. They trusted in God. And God delivered them. He is a great deliverer. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Let us, let us trust in the Lord. Let us not doubt Him. Whatever the circumstances, because as we live this life, there's many circumstances, we'll, we will come upon many circumstances. But let us trust in the Lord for deliverance, for healing, for victory over the enemy. Because He has conquered all for us. Through, his, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have the victory. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us continue to trust in the Lord. Let us continue to be Abraham, who walks, stand on the promises of God. And when God says, come out of your kindred, out of your father's house, he obeyed. God said, I will multiply your seed as the sand on the seashore, as on the stars in the heavens. And now, we, and now we can't count. God has kept his promise now because we cannot count the seed of Abraham. They're scattered in the four corners of the earth. Praise God. God is sure. His promises are sure. Let us continue to trust and believe in God. Faith gives us favor with God. Faith is all we need to trust in the Lord, to, to receive favor from the Lord. Faith gives us favor with God. God bless you today. As I close this, our teleconference, thank you for joining us. I see we have Sister McLean there. God bless you, Sister McLean. Are you God there? bless you, Brother Johnson. How are you, my dear sister? God bless you. Uh, God bless you too, Brother Johnson. Always I'm good to have you joining you. us. Tired, tired. I know your church has convention. I mean, 70 yeah, years. Mom, Is it 70 three, years um, old now, mom. your church? It, it was um, the six, 60th anniversary. Oh, 60th. Okay, I'm, I don't know where I get seven from. Yeah, 60th was, anniversary, that's was, good. Okay. Today was the last day. Yesterday it was at um, Stratford at the banquet. All right. All right. Well, that's wonderful. 60 years. Yeah. My God. Yeah, yes, yes. God is Thursday good. Thursday night, we have a meeting Thursday night, and then Saturday we went to the town hall for the banquet. Um, and then today, it's at church, today is the last day. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, it's good that you have to come and wait 60 years. Tired. Yeah. But that's yeah. good because many churches just closed down 60 years ago. Some of the, so many churches have been in this, even in this London here, have closed down over 60 years. So many of them, most half the church has closed down. So it's good that that church has been keeping up for 60 years. God bless them. Yes, yes, yes. God bless the brethren there. So maybe you should share a thought with us before we close um, and maybe I can call on Pastor Winston after on this word of faith. Faith is something that we can't leave out. It's a very no. important okay. part of our salvation. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Brother Tim. Good Pastor evening, man. Good evening. Sister Rose and the rest of the brethren that is on this Zoom this evening. I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Giving him thanks and giving him praise for this a new day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice in it and be glad. Thanking him for his favor. Thanking Amen. him for saving me and keeping me. Amen. You know, you know, God is good all the time. Yes. And you know, as I sit here and I came on about almost um six thirty. And I heard uh, Brother Tamsaw uh, speaking on the topic of faith. And with Abraham, you know, Abraham was a man of faith. Yes. Man who reverenced, reverenced God. Yes. And um, Abraham had Isaac in his old age, old age. And he's the one and only yes. son, the son of promise. And God told him to take his one son mm -hmm. and to, to take him as a sacrifice. And you know, to see how strong the Abraham's faith was and believe that it, and even 
kill his son, yes. God is going to raise him back yes. to life. Yes. That is the faith that Abraham yes. had. And Abraham didn't ask no question and say, why, Lord, look, I can't have any more. And this is one child I have. But he obediently and willingly take Isaac, take Isaac mm -hmm. with him. Make the altar, lay the wood and everything. And when Isaac asked, here is the wood, here is the fire, and where is the lamb for the sacrifice? He said, the Lord will provide. Yes. You know, God is an untimed God. Yes. He's a God that we can't fathom, fathom him out. No. You know, because... He is here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, man. And sometimes when God says something to us, sometimes it looks very foolish. It doesn't look like any sense in it at all. Yes. But as he was saying when Jesus saw this, fill the water pot with water. And, and Mary said to whatever he told you, do it. Yes. You know, sometimes some things are so foolish in our eyes and you know we would say you know this is so foolish yes. but it is God know what he's doing mm -hmm. and what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I could remember I could remember one Sunday as I we are I'm sitting here right now and it was in the COVID time and no one could go to church you know down just sitting there and was waiting on to get on Zoom for our service and the Spirit said to me, go and um, pray for Tanya. And I hesitated and I said, why? And, it, and the Spirit speak, speak, keep speaking to me. And I got up and I don't know what it was. He did, the, the, I, I didn't get any, any other addition, just say, go and pray for her. And I went in the kitchen and I said to her, Tanya, the Lord said, I might, I must pray for you. I don't know what, but I'm going to pray. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. And I prayed for her. And about an hour after, oh, have mercy. It was something different. And it was over the phone. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. If I didn't pray and follow mm -hmm. the spirit and the voice of the Lord, it would be worse. Yes. I don't know. God is good. I don't know, but God knows he does. what was going to take place. And he has seen it from afar, yes. but we don't see. You know, and with Abraham, Abraham reverenced God. Mm -hmm. And he know that even though he can kill his son, he was going he's him. going to come back to life again. Yes. You know, Abraham was a man of faith. And so, we too, here... We, we 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 never see Jesus. No. We never we never we never hold on to his hand. No, no. No. We no. never see him face to face and talk to him as we are talking no. No. But no. we believe that there is a God. Yes. 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 And he is real. Yes. And it's just a week ago we just celebrate his birth, his death, and his, his resurrection. resurrection. And we know that he's alive. Yes. And by faith, we are serving him by faith and knowing that one day, one sweet day, someday, we don't know when, we don't know how, but we know he'll be coming back again. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's coming back with his hands full of reward to give yes. every man according Amen. to our work. So let us work faithfully. Watching nothing. Don't let nobody steal our joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm. And let us press. Press. Yes. As Paul said, I press towards the mark of the uh, price. Of the high of calling. The high calling mm. In Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Forgetting the things that are behind. And reaching forward to the things that are before. Yes. Because we are on a journey. Praise God. We are on a journey. And I'm telling you, there are many potholes. Yes. There yes. are trials. Mm -hmm. There are temptations. There are botheration. But Paul said, 
who shall separate us from the love, love of God, God in Christ Jesus. That's right. Let nothing distract us. And let us not only talk with our mouth because we have a big mouth and we can talk and we know words, big words, mm -hmm. and nothing behind. Our words are light because it's, it's not coming from nowhere, it's just coming from the lips. You know, Jesus said, these people worship me with their mouth, mm -hmm. but their, their heart, heart is yes, far from yes, me. Yes. You know, and he's a spirit. And they who worship him are to worship him in spirit, spirit and in and truth. Church. And may we have that indwelling faith, that daily faith, and trust God. And wait upon the Lord and be of good courage mm -hmm. and he will strengthen our heart. God bless you, Brother Thompson. And God bless you all, my brethren. Love you all. Mm -hmm. And let us fight on and hold on to God's unchanging hand and let us encourage each other not to pull down each other mm. but to fill up each other encourage each other that is love for God loves us so we are to love our one another God bless you Amen. these are my few words in Jesus name God bless you thank you um, Sister McLean for your words um, we know that you know you know about faith because I know you have your your faith has been tested and tried over and over oh, again so over and times. over and over and I don't know I'm no I know you're not gonna let go you just ain't no, gonna I let go not. praise the Lord and this is what God I wants us to do to I'm hold not. on right to the very end we, even though, and even just believe, though, just believe that even now, yes, even now, as, as long as, no, even now, as, as I'm sitting here, yes, I believe, I believe, yeah. but know that God is in control, He will not let, yes, he, will, he will provide the time when that time is there, He will be there, he be on time, yes, he will. God he is never, never late, He is not going to be late, He's not no. going to be late, He's not going no. to be late, no. So we All just we have, have to, to wait, wait, and wait on the Lord courage. and be of good courage and he Amen. shall strengthen thine heart. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Wait upon Amen. the Lord. Amen. And then again, again, Amen. I say, wait on the Lord. They that wait upon yes. the Lord, hallelujah, shall renew their strength, renew shall their strength. mount up as with wings. With as, wings like oh, we don't know the power of hallelujah. eagle. We don't know the power. You know, yeah. the, the eagle, talking about the yeah. eagle, the eagle have some powerful wings, you know. The, we, the, 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 the eagle can actually live maybe five, ten times their weight. That's the power of an eagle. Yes, go ahead. Higher, they can higher. take up big animals. They can lift off animals. They can see. They can lift up animals and fly with them. So imagine have that power that we can lift five times our weight or more. That's what God is going to do for us. We shall be Wake, wings as wings as eagle. We shall run and not be weary. We shall run and not faint. Amen. God bless you, Sister McLean. Pastor Winston, God bless you. Nice to have you. Nice to have you, Pastor Winston. Maybe you could share a little word with us. Yes, sir. Yes. Greetings, Greetings, sir. Greetings, Pastor. 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 In my father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and see with you unto myself, that where I am, here you may be also. And when I go, you know now, and the and way you know, someone said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And, and we, how can how can we know the way? Mm -hmm. He just said unto him, I am the way, 
the truth and the life. Life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Um, no, this I was a doubting. Was cutting the master. But you have got to accept him. I am the way. The truth and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, we know we have to go to Jesus Christ to with the Father. And that's the faith we have. That we have to go to Jesus. And we have to believe that there is a Jesus and there is a God. And we believe that we don't know where none of doubt in Thomas. As Sir Maclean said before, we have seen God. We have shake his hand. We have talked to him. Mm -hmm. We well, talk to us to the Spirit. Yes. And that's the faith we have. Yes. That God is here with us. Night and day. Every second of the minute, he with us. The God of Jacob, Isaac, Abraham, the God of Shadrach, Bishop, Mary Winger, he's with us. And my faith, we look up to him and know that he is Jesus Christ alone. And he and the Father is one. Yes. So when you see Jesus, you see God. So we have that faith and we have no doubt that one day we shall be with him. Yes. And there's a heaven. That one day we're going to the heaven. And we're going to live again. And we are mortal now because the body is subject to die. Mm -hmm. We are going to be mortality. Mortality forever. No one will live forever. Mortality, mortality. Mortality will everlasting life. And we shall not die. We live, 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 live. Yes. Hallelujah. From I wonder what it's going to be. I wonder what it's going to be when they get there. And there's going to be joy. Mm. And then the peace. Unspeakable. Long life. Yes. No doubt. Amen. No, no doubt that he's there for us when he is here and he take us home to glory. Mm. God bless you, Bridget. And I'm glad that this, Mr. Tom is doing a wonderful work. And we are going to support him as he continues to print the word. I was listening to earlier earlier. I was cooking. I was listening. And everything that is said. Amen. And um, it edified me. And I'm blessed by what you said and what Sister McLean said. And when Sister Rosie said, I'm blessed. I know that we are going to get there one day, get to heaven. And we don't know doubt that Jesus is coming back one day with our reward in his hand to get man according to what they have done. To continue good work, continue to fight the good fight of faith. Because I want my faith and not my faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a full time in church today. We are glorious time. I'm blessed. I do I'm tired. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. tonight. I'm blessed. I feel healthy. I feel strong. I feel like worshiping God till tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. God is good. He's ready to be praised. And that's my few words in just my name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Winston. It's good to have you. And I'm glad you had a wonderful time in church. You know, it's good when after church and church is over, we can say we had a wonderful time. Surely the presence of God was with us. So God bless you. I'm glad the Lord visited you today in church and, you know, you had a wonderful time. It was a blessing. We had a nice time. I went down to um, Peckham. It was a nice service down there. God is good, my brethren. Let us continue to trust in Him. And you know, yeah. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. So we must remember that Jesus is our all. He's the doorway. He's our doorway. We must go through that door to find the Lord. He is the Lord. Uh, Sister, Sister Rose, um, you, you want to join? Can you join us in a song? You make me laugh, my hubby. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, just I'll just do a quick chorus saying God bless you all and bless great you. testimony and encouraging words bless today. You. I'll just do a quick chorus. Real, 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 Christ so real to me, oh, I love him because he gives us the victory. Many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me, oh, real, 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 Christ so real to me. I love 
walk with the cross to give us the victory. Many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. One more time. Real, real, real. Christ so real to me. Oh, I love Because he gave us the victory. Many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Amen. Amen. He's so real. Real, real Christ, so real to me. Hallelujah. Many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. This is why I love him so. Thank you, Sister Rose. We know he's real. We have proven that he's real. He is real. If he wasn't real, we wouldn't be alive today. If he was not no. real, we would not be alive. We are we are alive because we live because he lives. We live because he lives. And we know, thank God, he was resurrected from the dead. And he has the key of death, hell, and the grave. And he's given us the victory. Aren't we? We are blessed. Virgil, we are blessed. We are too blessed to be stressed. Praise God. So let us continue giving God the glory. Let us continue to lean on Him. Because He's going to prepare a place, as Pastor Winston says, He's going to prepare a place for us. That where He is, we may be also. He's going to prepare a place for us. A mansion in the sky. Not a mansion in some some other country but a mansion in the sky which will abide forever that's what God has promised us and his promise he promised Abraham that he'll multiply his seed as the stars in the sky and who can count the seeds of Abraham today who can count it you can't count the stars in the sky you can't count the seed of Abraham God kept his promise 2,000 years 3,000 years 4,000 years 5,000 years ago He's never failed. He's never lied. He's never failed. He has never lied since this world began. Well, we have to stand on this world, virgin, trust in him. He's real. Christ so real. He is so real. He's so real to us. God bless you. Father, I thank you for everyone that has joined. I pray you bless everyone that has joined this teleconference. I pray your hand will be upon us all. I pray you will cover us all under your blood. I pray you will guide and protect us. I pray you will help us to have that faith that Abraham had and that he trusted in you right down to the last that he knew that you would not fail him and you did not fail him and you have never failed anyone help us to have the faith that you will not fail us and we know that you stand by your word your promises are sure if we only believe thank you jesus bless us lead us and guide us we ask these blessings in jesus name Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, my brethren. Thank you for joining us. Sister PC, Sister Bean Brina, Pastor Winston, Sister Rose, Sister McLean.